this has been a very highly requested, not just the model truck, but the type of truck. It's a drifting truck. And even though we have a giant boatload of RC cars over here, this is our first drift truck. A model made by the somewhat new and very popular MJX Hypergo. It's got a gyro in there. Not the type made of lamb meat. <laughs> Not a whole lot of information on the box, just a bunch of cool pictures, the remote, and it shows the innards, obviously. Yeah, we've got a brushless motor, that's fantastic. Oil-filled aluminum shock, and a 45 amp ESC, so she should be ready to run on 3S. This video, we're gonna do two and 3S. I don't even know what battery it comes with. We're gonna find out in just a second. And we've got a great area for some drifting outside, so I cannot wait to see what it looks like inside this box. Wow, this car is just ready to go, popping out of the box on its own like that. No time to waste, he says. It comes with these little plastic straps like you usually see in like a toy box type of car. But I see that as just more care put into their packaging, which I think is great. Just obviously don't forget to take them off. Hey, we got a clear cover. Okay, this is exciting. You gotta get all this garbage out of the way. And an extra set of tires. Different tread pattern, you can feel. Oh yeah, and these are harder rubber. We'll see if there's any other differences. Oh, plastic drifting tires. We're definitely gonna do those also. Wow, even got a set of springs. Now that is one mean looking truck. I love the looks of it, but we'll get back to this thing in a second. Here's our extra set of tires. These have a little more squish to them. These might drift better, being a harder rubber. These will drift really well. I'm gonna try all three of these. But anyway, it also comes with extra body clips, wheel nut wrench, a screwdriver. There's your controller, which does allow you to go down to 70% speed. So you can make it slower when you're first learning. I don't know if these are softer springs or if they're harder springs. We'll see if we can figure that out in a minute. The user manual here, of course, shows you all the information that you need to run the car. And then it's got part numbers with exploded parts diagrams to help you order the correct part that you need. Yeah, this has fantastic parts breakdowns. Look at that. Very detailed and easy to read. It even has a center support bearing for the drive shaft. That's incredible. Even gives you a list of all the exact screw sizes matched to the part number. M26104, M26104. Gives you the size and what type of head it's got. And there's your tire info. The ones that are installed on the car, soft. Then we've got medium. And then of course the solid plastic ones are high hardness. And then the list of all the parts used on the car. Now this 3S battery can be purchased separately. It's not included with the truck, but we're gonna use it as well so that you can see how the truck performs on a 3S battery because it's rated for it. Now enough about all this garbage over here. This truck is really, really smooth and it's heavy. And as any drifter needs, it feels like it's very bottom heavy. It's got a metal chassis. It stands up on end, which is very important. Actually, not at all. A whole lot of buffering before the metal chassis would be subject to any frontal collisions. It's got a lot of foam right there. I'll show you that in a second. It's a heavy truck. I'd say that could use a little bit of a longer lead wire, but it plugs directly into the receiver. You gotta be careful with that. And remember, this thing's got some sweet LEDs up top and some sweet LEDs in the front. You got a cover to help protect it from dust with cutouts for the fans. By the way, fan on the ESC and a fan on the motor. Hypergos have been very good about doing that. There's that really dense, thick foam up here in the front bumper. A whole lot of protection before any damage should happen to that aluminum chassis. Now I can't find any information on if this is waterproof. This is a dust cover, but it's gonna help with water too, obviously. And it's like midnight, but it's supposed to storm most of the night, so it's probably gonna be wet outside when we run this, so we'll find out. And yeah, these springs are pretty soft. These ones that it came with here in the bag are definitely stiffer springs. It comes with two of these 2S 2000 milliamp batteries. And alongside that 3S that they offer, you can also still purchase a 2S with 3000 milliamps that fits right in there. All right, so we've got plastic tie rods. These probably have a metal threaded piece in the middle. We've got metal CVD axles in the front, 
metal differential cups, meaning we likely have metal differential gears. Same in the rear, we have CVD axles, no dog bones to fall out, and metal differential cups. Rather solid plastic on these shock towers. I'm a big fan of flax, not plastic. Flexible plastic. That should be a word though. Flexible plastic is less likely to break in the event of a collision or a bad landing when you jump. But when your shock towers are too flexible, they start to bend over because these are supporting the weight of the vehicle through the shocks. We have an aluminum bar going all the way across to keep the chassis from uh, tacoing or bending. Extra plastic bracing to help hold the chassis and everything in its place. There's that beautiful brushless motor with a heat sink and a fan. There's that center support bearing right there in the middle. And actually, I'm looking at it here and it's not really a bearing. It's just a hole to help keep it in place. You know, that's better than having nothing there like most cars. Here's the gyro, which you can set to different levels. We're definitely gonna experiment with that as well. You can turn it all the way down to zero, all the way up to 100%, or and looks like anywhere in between. The gyro is kind of designed to help keep the car straight. It's got what I assume is a yaw sensor in it, and if it sees the car start to veer, whatever kind of magic that uses, it'll actually adjust the steering servo to help correct it and keep it straight. So if you're trying to drift, Sometimes you want to turn the gyro off, I think. Again, first drifter. We've got our rear bumper here, which is designed to take impacts and protect all the other things. But at the same time, it's also a diffuser. For the size of the car, that's a pretty thick chassis. I mean, that's about an eighth of an inch. We're going to try and verify that because now I'm curious. We've got just under an eighth of an inch, which is just under three millimeters. Which is not bad being that much bigger eighth scale cars a lot of times only have three to four millimeters themselves. Even the old chassis off of my 6S Creighton is three millimeters. And that is a much larger car. Well, I think that about covers the pre-test drive visual inspection. We're gonna start out with the 2S battery that it comes with, 2000 milliamp hours. Then we'll jump up to the 3000 milliamp 2S optional battery, see how much more runtime we get. And then of course, we're gonna try the 3S as well. And somewhere in the mix, we're gonna change the tires out a couple times. All right. Of course, we're starting out with those softer tires. Look at those sweet lights. Ooh, that's fast. Takes a little getting used to. Oh. All right, we're going to do a speed, our 2S speed test. 25.6 miles an hour, and we'll test it on 3S too in a minute. It's pretty icky under here. This definitely helps, but there's still quite a bit of gunk underneath it. Little bitty pebbles actually keep getting in here. Well, hit, there's a big rock. Keep getting in here and blocking the steering. All right, now we've got the higher capacity 2S battery in there and the hard rubber tires installed.
we got it all muddy. Another pebble blocking the steering. Here you go, dude man bro face. Yep. Nice. You got your horse? Yep. Sweet. Another pebble causing problems. You hit the curve. Yes, I did. More pebble problems. Now we've got the ultra plastic slicks installed and we are still on that high capacity 2S battery. 3S will be next. That's it. That's it. All right, we got a pebble stuck again. See, right there. Now we've got three S in there. Still got the slicks on it. Nice, dude. All right, we still got her on 3S. Now we're going back to the hard rubber tires because those were my favorite ones. They still provide decent traction and allow it to drift. All right, hopefully that stays on there. This is our 3S speed test. Woohoo! Oh, that's pretty hard to control. Wow, that was some awesome brakes. <laughs> it just skidded all the way down because, you know, he just likes to run out in front of everything. Don't you? Yes, I do. All right, what's the speed thing say? 37.5. All right, this is, I think this is going to be much better. This definitely takes practice. Uh, pebble again, man. Why do you keep calling it pebble? There's a pebble. That's what these are. Here, you can eat one. No! <laughs> Sorry. No. Hey, with my shirt. <laughs> Oh, right in the dirt, mud stuff. Good thing you ate them all. Well, it is.
is a new day and it is dry out there now, even though it rained a whole lot again this morning. I haven't cleaned this out yet, but we're gonna keep running it on 3S. Now we have the dry pavement and we're going to mess with the gyro this time. So we'll do it with the gyro still at 0%. Then we'll turn it up to 50 and then we'll turn it up to 100 and we'll see what kind of differences it makes. I don't know if it'll make it easier or harder to drift. We'll see. Oh, it does go crazy fast. Yeah, it does. Those strong pebbles. Oh, getting there. Oh. <laughs> oh. Let's turn this gyro up a little bit. All right, she's adjusted at 50%. Ooh, maybe that will help a little bit. Oh, right in your mud puddle, Sammy. All right, let's turn that thing up to 100%. There's full gyro, you can see it turning on its own. Oh. Okay, well, it was soaking wet, fresh from the hose, and it still ran. So it's at least somewhat waterproof. At least it seems that way. These tires, these were the hard rubber tires are pretty much rubber slicks, except they're starting to tear. The fronts aren't as worn as the rear, which is pretty typical, but still, they're pretty much slicks now. Now we ran those, I believe through three battery packs. One, two, no, we ran them through four. One 2S, maybe about three quarters of a 3S, and then two more 3S packs. That's a lot of runtime on one set of drifting tires because drifting tires just don't last as long as non-drifting tires. Here's those soft rubber tires, very little, pretty much no wear on those. But all we did for that one was run this stock 2S battery with 2,000 milliamps. We got roughly 16 minutes of runtime with that. Then we switched over to this 2S 3,000 milliamp battery, and that's when we switched over to these hard rubber tires, and we got about 19 minutes with that. About three quarters of the way using it, we switched over to these plastic slicks. And when running these, you really rev the motor up a whole lot more. So that may have used up battery power a little quicker than running it on these like we did with that. So ultimately it probably would have lasted a few minutes longer on the same tires that we ran this on. And then with this 3S battery, which is only 2000 milliamps, we got about 18 minutes. So all relatively consistent run times. Obviously these were both a little bit longer than this one. Again, these batteries are sold separately. Sifu brand. Sifu kind of puts me in the mood for sushi. They also say angry snail on them, which puts me in the mood for no food at all. I'll find a link to these batteries and if I can't find them, I will post something similar. But this is a pretty well-rounded truck and, and kit. I mean, it comes with, again, three different tires, the extra springs, which I never used because really I didn't feel like it needed them, but 
hey, maybe it would have made things better. I don't know. Obviously, I do need a little bit of practice with the drifting. I can't tell yet if I like it with or without the gyro. Honestly, going back through the footage, it kind of looks like I did better without it. But it seemed like I did better with it when I was doing it. So I don't know. When it comes to drifting, I do believe that these hard rubber tires were my favorite. It was a lot of fun with these plastic slicks as well. And if you're looking just for better control and road use, these soft rubbers were, were a lot more grippy. This would also be a relatively good drag race car because it takes off really well. You turn that gyro on and it stays straight the whole time. Without the gyro, it's really easy for it to spin out, especially again on those hard rubbers. Lots of impacts at relatively good speeds. Nothing's broken, everything is solid. Scratches from rocks and just the pavement in general all over the chassis, but definitely still straight. As you might have noticed, pebbles getting in here and clogging things up was a big issue. They loved shooting right inside here and getting wedged between this plastic post and that steering arm, blocking you from being able to turn left. That was the most common issue. A couple times, pebbles and little tiny sticks got stuck in the wheel spokes and would cause one of the wheels not to spin. We've got a whole lot more reviews, comparisons, and experiments coming up not to mention a haircut. So if you haven't already, subscribe, like this video, share it with some people who you think might be interested, and we will see you soon. Uh -huh.